So what is here technologies? Most people will know us from our automotive grade maps, which are embedded in a vast majority of the cars out here. Mainly owned by car manufacturers, as you see on this slide, but also part of the Bosch family. Not a lot of people might know this, but Bosch owns a little bit of our shares, so we consider ourselves part of the bigger Bosch family as well. Uh, but then maybe like the unknown cousin in the Bosch family that provides mapping and location services to a broader spectrum of automotive OEMs. So we're not typically the startup that started a few years ago to map some roads and to deliver some technology. We're out there for 30 years already. With over 200 countries mapped, we have a global coverage of the road network digitized. We have over 9,000 employees in um, over 100 countries in the world represented. 30 years ago, we started with mapping the first parts of the road network in Germany. For a very specific automotive OEM, we mapped a certain part of southern Germany. That was the first map that we brought into a sat-nav. Today, you cannot believe that you know, all the road network is digitized and we're moving on from here. So, to get you into a little bit of history, I start with paper. So, who knows this time, and if I look into the audience, there are a few people that might qualify for this, uh, that drove around with paper maps, right? You drove to your holiday home in Italy or in Spain, and you just pull open the dashboard, and then just you got this paper map. There was still this potential of getting lost. Um, we started building the digital maps, so we really got from paper to digital. And in the time, 30 years ago, we said we're going to develop the first digital maps, and the paper map is going to completely disappear in this era, people said, you're crazy, we'll always have this paper map as a backup in the car. As we know, as of today, there is no paper map anymore around, we just use the digital maps. Then we got from digital to mobile. When 10 years ago, Nokia acquired us, uh, they had the vision to get mobile phone services combined with local location intelligence and GPS sensors. You might remember the Nokia N95 in that times, which was a full location-enabled mobile phone. And again, people said at that time, what do you want to do with location services on a mobile phone? I'm not quite sure if you can find an app on your iOS or Android device today that is not consuming location service or not using mapping intelligence right now. Of course, it went another way with Nokia um, when the iPhone came, when Android came, so they sold us ultimately to the automotive OEMs. Then we went from 2D, a static road network, into 3D. The way we collect road network data is with LiDAR cars and we also use satellite imagery. By combining these two data sets, we are able to populate a city model in 3D. So people who own a modern car will drive into a city and see the landmarks already in 3D rise on their navigation systems. But we also have many other use cases with this 3D data. 3D data. One of the use cases is a telco use case. All the telcos are really focused today on rolling out their 5G networks and planning the microcells around the city. The data that we have, the 3D models, including the building materials and the street networks and utility poles, they use that as a data model to plan their 5G networks. So they don't have to go out there and do site surveys in every city around the world. They just basically do that from their desk with artificial intelligence. They completely plan the rollout of 5G networks. So that is a very different case than automotive, which we have today. From, t from 3D, we, go to, we had statics maps in the past. From static, we went to live. So probably you all have a car and you have a sat nav there and no one updated it really. You know, you're not going to a dealership and then spend 300 euros buying a new USB stick for new data. So you basically waited until your company car was out of contract, you bought a new one and then you had data. The fun thing is people complained with here that we don't have an accurate map and if you have any kind of smartphone app that was more accurate and more updated than our in-car navigation. But in fact, we have over a million up map updates per day. But the only way to get them into the car is to a connected car. So the mobile phone was obviously already connected, but the lack of updates was basically to, due to the infrastructure that we had with automotive OEMs to push the updates to the car. Going forward, you probably will not see a new car rolled out that is not connected anymore and cannot receive our automated updates over the air. So our map will be as accurate or even more accurate than any smartphone app that you can find there. Then we went from SD, which is our standard definition, into high definition. Standard definition is a perfect map, which is middle of the road, which you would use 
for any kind of use case where there is a driver who is guided by a navigation system. But if we think future and we think autonomous cars, a seven meter accurate map is not enough to have a car guided autonomously. So we went from SD to HD, and HD is almost centimeter, but exactly link precision in a map. That is a map that we're building today. We started with all the autobahns and motorways, and we're developing that into urban areas today as well. So the new cars will, it will be equipped with HD maps that fit future use cases like autonomous. And then we went from outdoor to indoor. So the journey from a car always starts and ends with parking, whether that's off-street parking or on-street parking. For off-street parking, you can imagine use cases that you would be guided to the exact same free spot in a parking garage at the third floor. But for that, you need an indoor map to know where is the availability and how to guide you to that specific free spot. But you can think broader. Everyone knows the retail example, that we have the navigation in an airport from a specific retail store to the specific gate. What is the time to get to your uh, estimated gate? Um, you can also think of transport and logistics, end-to-end -end tracking in warehouses that you exactly determine an asset indoors as well. So our world really transformed from a 2D representation of the street network, which we started building 30 years ago, to a complete index of reality, as we like to call it. So we call this index of reality our digital twin of the world. The ambition of here is to build this digital twin of the world where all the reality in, in is indexed. Whether it's in the third dimension, whether it's indoors or outdoors, we are building this data set to provide you with solutions that are location intelligent. So we talked a lot about automotive, but very similar to Bosch, IoT represents the next big opportunity for here outside of automotive. Our main business has always been automotive, but probably you remember the time when there were only landlines that you would only have to call on your landline, and there are a few people that might have not been in that era, but there was never the question, where are you? Today, when I call with my friends, it's always like, where are you, where are you? Because you know, they want to know how close they are, what is around, what am I doing? And that is very similar to IoT devices. We want to know where these devices are. What are they doing? What is around? How do we get them as efficient as possible from A to B? So the whole, the whole connected world in automotive and mapping world moves now into IoT as well. Whether it's transport and logistics, asset management, workforce management, real-time tracking, it all requires location service. All of these use cases cannot be done without location services. Think of Uber. Uber is for me not a taxi app, but it's really a location app. It knows where you are, where the taxi drivers are, what the easiest way from A to B is. It is 90% is location. So I believe IoT is location, and moving forward, we all need this index that we can find location, that we know what is around, and that we can plan things efficiently. So I already talked about an autonomous world, how to um, integrate yet, and this is our reality index as we call it. It includes locations, POIs, vehicles, it goes beyond roads, indoor, outdoor, in two dimensions, in three dimensions. It just really indexes the reality out there. You can think of this as a virtual reality of the world, which you can tap into if you want to know where things are. We cannot do this alone. So people will generally not buy location data. You will not buy an app with only location. You always want to have something on top of it, which is the application whether it's navigation, whether it's a taxi app or whatsoever. So we work with these partners to jointly build solutions that we bring to the market in IoT. And I want to zoom into a few use cases before we go to the Q&A that we have established in our collaboration with Bosch. The first is the obvious one. I talked about this already. That's automotive solutions. Together with Bosch hardware, Bosch software, here integrated map data and connected services, we provided many OEMs with the navigation experiences for their mobility users. This is a joint proposition that Bosch and here are just jointly working on for many years already. You probably not see it on the outside because it's either Daimler or it's BMW, but it is Bosch and here inside. And this is a use case that I'm very, very, into, very, very excited about. Uh, this is also what Mr. Bola announced today in one of his keynotes. We are working together with Bosch Building Technologies and SAST to automatically extract map updates from video surveillance cameras. So you can imagine that video surveillance cameras are all over the world. They are covering many, many, many buildings and also street networks. So what if we could run an algorithm that extracts features and changes from camera imagery? 
We don't have to invest in new infrastructures, we don't have to do site surveys, but we automatically update our maps based on changes that occur in the video screens. And for us, this is kind of the holy grail of automating map updates. If you have a visual on the whole world and you can extract the map updates and publish them without touching them, then we get close to what we call the reality index and our digital twin. Also very excited about the Bosch Building Technologies collaboration that we have out there. With Bosch we're working on, on CCTV as said, um, but there is not much location context today if you see a security system. A security system only knows where people are, so the operator, if they need to follow someone from A to B in a building, needs to go from camera screen to camera screen to camera screen. What if you would provide location services to that, so that you know that someone cannot jump from the first to the eighth floor without having a stair or an elevator in the, in, in the closed neighborhood? So we apply again location intelligence to that. And as we like to reuse existing infrastructures, we're now working together with them with uh, fire detectors, with cameras to put also sensors in there to be able to position things and people around the building based on the existing technology that Bosch puts out there. And lastly, here indoor mapping also serves in the shopping world. So we have a, a, a collaboration with the guys at Yero in India where we personalize shopping experience. You just come into a stage, you come into a supermarket, and you get your information about the Diet Coke that you buy every week, which is now discounted, and which is in row four, rack number four. So you're being guided around the supermarket with the items that are most valuable for you, and that you get the quickest route outside. We have this up and running today. I can go on and on and on for more use cases that we're building with Bosch, uh, but I like to, would like to open it for questions right now.